Steve Benetti is holding, is demonstrating how to hold the cards with card saver ones. Yeah, no snapping. This is, you're gonna play slow play. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, I'm done. All right, guys, this video is actually a deck tech of a deck that I made. We had the video of this blue, the blue vice. Is that what you're calling it? Blue vice. Blue yeah. vice liquid deck. Liquid degeneracy. The liquid degeneracy. We gotta think yeah. of something more like, like this. How about liquid nitrogen? Liquid nitrogen. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> sure. All right, so uh, basically this deck is uh, Red Blue Chaos Bombastic. That's what I called it online, but that's probably not correct. Uh, I made this for Brian. Kind of uh, honestly, I made it uh, last minute when I was packing to Noobcom, and we're on the way to beautiful Hamburg. Uh, we're gonna stay there for a couple days and then go Gothenburg directly. But because we're not allowed to film in the Alpha Forty tournament, we want to show I don't show you guys this deck. Uh, Brian's played it now a few times. Brian, what do you think? Like about this deck? I think it's pretty good. From an overall think, first time. Well, I mean, I think on the degeneracy, yeah. degeneracy scale of what people are capable of building, the deck is 99th percentile. There aren't very many people that can even match, come close to matching the card pool in general and the speed of this deck. I think it's a little unfocused in the sense that, right? In terms There's of what, in terms, in terms of what fundamentally matters. Steve's here. In this format, card draw and card discard, and discard are the two primary ways that you can win. And so the deck needs more of that and less of the things like it, it's, it's doing too much, too many different things. Yeah. What Alpha Card 40 is about, fundamentally what makes Alpha Card 40 fundamentally different than, than other formats is that there's no deck construction limitation, except for the card pool. So there's no ban and restricted list. And what that means, the practical effect of that is that it means that deck construction should be much more streamlined and simplified, meaning that you're doing one or two key things. Yeah. You might want to do, you basically have a plan A and a plan B. And what this deck is doing is basically plans A through F. And so what you really, like basically, I mean think about it, right? You've got like this insane land destruction, permanent destruction strategy. You've got this mana, this uh, discard component. And then you have this beatdown component and a random jam day tone. <laughs> so, so what you really want to do is figure out like what what random. is it you want this right. deck to do, right? right. Like y it's fine to be a juggernaut deck yeah. that then clears the board and it clears out of the way. It's also fine to be a discard deck, but then you want to focus around doing that as opposed to having extraneous cards. All right. So if you guys were to have some fun, you guys are two of the top players I've ever met in my life. It's been an honor to play with you guys. Thank you. The way that um, you could make it a so, lot So better. far, by the way, guys, these morons haven't let me play it at all. These guys play Commander <laughs> by themselves, and we fucking were lost. Oh, no, hold This is what happened. We're, we're late to our, our train by one minute, because these guys were playing Commander at Damn a right. place where just... It's just it's it was fun. In, in the Swiss Alps, and I want to let you guys know that I feel very, very disappointed in them. That's all I gotta say about all that. Right. Anyway. Um, all right, go ahead. So how would you refine this? You well, guys are the doctors. The, the, two, the yeah. two aspects of the deck seem like they're at odds with each other, but honestly, the, the way you'd make the deck better is to just add more wheels and That's more what twists I was or say. mind twists. The idea being yeah. that you can... How many more wheels and what, and what are we doing? You more should, mind twists. You, you should, basically just make the deck, it just casts Wheel of Fortune how much time, yes. and then it mind twists its opponent's hand, and then you don't care. Yeah, okay, oh, hold on, sequencing. You wheel, mind twist their hand. You go mana, wheel, mana, wheel, mana, wheel, mind twist you, and then whatever. Then you just win with whatever. Oh, if, I would, way I would start bad. with a minimum of four wheels. Yeah. Right, right. I, I mean, I could have yeah, done that. Yeah. Four, so, five, so, six wheels of fortune. And, and how many mind twists? Seven mind twists? Similar. We've got probably four copies of mind twists. It, and what you're doing is every time you wheel, you're generating mana through each wheel. Exactly. So you play wheel, and then you like oh. play all the mana down. Put the so boxes. Yeah, so you really won't need chaos orbs. So no chaos orbs. You could run a few, but you don't need as many of no. these. You certainly don't need these. Certainly don't need the So six, 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 seven yeah. lotuses. If you were to make yeah. the deck more degenerate, it would just be more fast mana yeah, wheels. That's, that's super these are fine because the, if you're playing with wheels, yeah. these are actually good. Red. So all. Okay. So yeah. all. You're so, not taking time. So red and blue is good, right? Okay. In, In fact, the mana vault is better than soul ring if your main plan is just wheels. Got it. I got it. Okay. So just tons of mana vaults. Uh, ditch the chaos orbs. No, no so I, I would, this is probably, slow. This is slow game stuff. You probably yeah. want. You, there's a chance that you want a few, like like having. If if you go wheel and you and you have mind twist and you mind twist their hand, it's not the worst thing in the world to have one of these. Yeah, the scepter means that they have to draw mana in order to interact. With yeah, you, and they may draw five spells in a row because right. the decks tend to be very low mana anyway. So if they start with a zero card hand, the scepter is just way way stronger. You might actually. There are other better win conditions than yeah, this. I, I mean, it, if if that's the route that you, if your if your goal well, is to generate, mana, I like yeah. So if you're not so, trying, so, if you're so not talk about win, that. I want yeah, to juggle not. Win, if you're not trying to win quickly, yeah. you could just use. So I wanted a more fair interactive. You deck, could just use right, the, with the jade, jade, jade statues because the jade statues are just more resilient. They're harder to deal with. Uh, so if your opponent is already beginning the game super far behind, for example, the juggernauts, you could be playing against bolt dot deck. 
mind twist a guy for seven, and he could just draw a mountain and then draw eight bolts in a row and kill your offense for the rest of the game. If you have jade statues, there's no way he's getting out of that. And jade statues kill opposing juggernauts. They're immune to balance. They're just insane. So, in, in so jade statue should have, is much better if you want this route. I mean, yeah. basically, I think Alpha Card Forty has these different tiers, right? There's these core strategies that are that are buildable. Like you can build the Vanilla Shira deck, you can build the Lightning Bolt deck, you can build a Plague Rat deck. You know, and those decks actually are competitive. If you're playing against like people who are like very fair decks. very constrictive in terms of what they like the plague rat deck, if you're playing basically like twenty plague rats, uh, seventeen, eighteen swamps, and like one or two other things, the plague rats are enormous. I mean, you, actually, what you do is you split it between rituals, plague rats, yeah, you need, and you need and, to be able to ritual yeah, number, but. and and but you basically have three, four plague rats in play by turn three, four, and they're enormous. They're you know it's nine damage. So the thing is basically there's a key, couple of key strategies. One is you can play the Wheel of Fortune deck, the Time Twister deck, which is basically what your blue deck is, yeah. fundamentally. You can play a Balance deck, and you can play a Mind Twist deck. Those are kind of the four key... Kind of, so, if you had, so if we were to do Pillars yeah. of, of the Alpha 40... Pillars of Alpha 40. Pillars yeah. of Alpha, so, so let's discuss Pillars of Alpha 40. Wheel Mind Twist, Time Twister, and, well, Ancestor Recall to the lesson. Well, I'm yes. confused. Those and are all ba separate? And, those, ba and Balance, yeah. And balance. But ba the Balance and Mind five. Twist deck are basically the same thing yes. in a different package. So you revolve a deck and around that. And the Twist and Wheel deck are the yes. same thing in a different package. But those, it's basically massive discard or massive card draw, but okay. it can be combined. Let's, yeah. So let's clarify this. Wheel and Time Twister. Yeah, that's basically one, one. archetype. Can we agree to that? Mind Twist next? and Balance. Mind Twist and, and Balance. balance. Okay, what else And is Ancestral there? Recall. Basically, your, your, your blue deck is a hybrid. Ancestral Recall. Your blue deck is a hybrid of the Twister Ancestral deck. And all the Ancestrals do is they remove all of the variants from the blue version. Yeah. Is Ancestral Vice... The, comp, well, the, the vices the, are incidental. It doesn't okay. matter what your yeah. win condition is. It could be any. Yes, it could literally be a brandizer. And it could be the ancestral recalls. Okay. Yeah. The, the reason. Consider I had five time walks stacked up there, right? So even yeah. a creature could have won the game there. I could have just won with a one a one drop and just time walk forever. The, what about creature decks? Uh, in a th hold on. At a theoretical okay. level, the time twister deck is actually more consistent. But the problem with the time twister deck is you have to shuffle so many times that you don't really want to be doing that with that deck. Yeah. It just says wear and tear. The fact the fact that your blue deck also contains six copies of Time Walk means that you could just win with any creature too. You could yes. play an Errol Mill or a Phantom Monster or something and win. With All right, you guys didn't talk about pillars of, of creatures. I well, mean, I don't understand. What's that mean? So the pillars of creatures. There's basically, you know, what there is is there's core concepts, okay. and then there's variants of those core concepts, got which it, is what it. we just been talking about. Okay, okay. So the core concepts are you could play a, basically a Plague Rat deck, which is a a deck that where the creatures get bigger as you continue to mount okay. them. Okay. You could play. The, a lightning bolt deck, which is a fair deck. It's just X number of lightning bolts, X number of mountains, and just race. You can play a... Um, but you, you can also play a, a, a Banalish Hero deck. But is that a pillar? A Banalish Hero deck, there there were multiple Banalish Hero decks at the Wizards tournaments. And what it does is it's actually very it's very hard for super fair decks to beat it. But I'm calling a pillar like dredge. No one's, no one's playing with sweepers to punish okay, it. Guys, no one's playing Earthquake guys, and Wrath of God. A pillar, to, okay, a pillar to me is like dredge and vintage... This you is know. Alpha Car 40. It's not a super defined no, metagame. But no, but okay, 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 it's okay. It's right, conceptual right. pillars. So what Sorry, I was thinking about Well, there's else. a limited card pool. Yeah. There's only 300 and some cards. There's actually 300 cards. 200, no, 295. Right, because the yeah. five cards are not in Alpha. There's no volcanic. So, or, so there's no yeah, volcanic. No, no so so has seven black. cards, seven cards. Uh, and and one, of, one of each of the lands. So the basic lands. So what you're really dealing with is basically core concepts. What The win conditions are quite limited. You can win with direct damage. You can win with a creature, and that's basically it. You can win with black vice is the is the other or way. Or decking. Black vice or decking. Those are the four ways to win. And the the decking is probably technically the best in a field of super competitive decks. The problem is if you were playing the decking deck yeah. and you ran against Francois with his, his fifty seven card deck, you would actually lose if you're playing the wheel deck. <laughs> yeah, well that's what the Feldman's game is, but it hasn't been printed yet. So. Yes. So I mean, there's ba you have a very limited card pool. You have to win with attacking. You have to win with uh, direct damage, which could be burn or black vise, or you win by decking. Your your blue deck can do does both. It does the second and the third. It's a hybrid. Right. There's multiple angles of attack. So this engine is so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that that was great, guys. So we're actually have a little distraction. Uh, hold on, real quick. We're gonna uh, finish this up. There's a little announcement. Hold on. All right, guys, we're wrapping it up. Sorry, we had a little uh, announcement. I think we're in some other another city. Um, last last thing is, uh, 
That's very Soviet. And this is more. This is more of like. Yeah. This is more of like a like conversation. Is that, you know how people like are like, you got okay. You obviously have people have multiple soul rings and multiple you know power nines. Some people like that, but then you have people with just the basic alpha commons and the uncommons and just simplistic deck. You know, just just feel good. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on like? just the format itself like you know like people who are you know, who get you know kind of maybe 1822 <laughs> may, maybe they get a little salty or they get upset you know that that someone could actually build something like this um here's another deck from one of the tournaments so you can or do you think the stuff. format should just be more about you know like the, the commons and slower and you know not not beat down type of strategy what do you what do you guys think like the like you know just kind of like this is the more sophisticated version of the play grand deck. Yeah, lots of rituals. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Just real quick, like you know. what do I think? What do yeah, we think about it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you go first. You go first. You, yeah, it's, yeah. A compl- it's a completely right, joke right, format. Right. So all bets are off, basically. I think that you just bring and play whatever you want, and the idea of taking it seriously or particularly caring about what someone is using is idiotic. <laughs> like, what what what's to be gained from doing that? It's a format that almost nobody can play. And those who even play it are playing decks that are all over the map in terms of seriousness and power level and et cetera, et cetera. I think that it's cool to be able to showcase a novelty like this. How many people have even seen yes, a, ten- exactly. a tenth of the concentration of the power of that deck? Plus, it's interesting to sort of see what Magic was truly capable of. People people liken the idea of all the crazy degeneracy being more recent, that all the turn one kill decks all came up, came about later on in Magic's lifespan obviously enabled by the stuff that they made back in the day, but the big degenerate combo decks just won instantly on turn one, didn't really show up until Urza's. what around Urza's block, exactly, with the advent of Tolarian Academy and stuff like that. Hmm. The fact that there was something like this in the ecosystem in 1993, that if you actually had all the resources and somehow the ability to acquire that, you could build a deck that could just win every single time on turn one. So, oh with wow. the original yeah. card pool is yeah. kind of insane to consider. But it also informs you about what the original design expectations and consumer expectations were about Magic when it was first invented. That there was no precedent in in gameplay and in, in, in hobby in general for something like the behavior that was observed by people playing Magic in the early days. Normally people would spend $25, $30 on a gaming habit, unless they were playing D&D and they were buying up modules and books and stuff. But the normal expectation was if someone had a gaming hobby, they would devote 25 to $30 annually on that particular hobby as long as they were interested in it. So if you only spend 25 or $30 on Magic, what is that back in the day? That's three starter decks or maybe a dozen boosters. Right. And you play with your friends and you play for ante and you wear the cards out and cards move around and you go on and do something else. There was never this idea that somebody would go and own 10 Black Lotuses or 20 of them. And so one Black Lotus in a, in a pool of 10, 10 players or a dozen players isn't a problem. Same thing with Ancestor Recall. It's only this crazy consolidation, which people felt compelled to do once they started to collect yeah. the game. Those who had access to the cards went out there, and the more savvy players understood what mattered, so they would go and acquire more and more and more of the cards and start moving in this direction, which is what necessitated the restricted list after a couple of months. So I have a slightly different answer. So if you think about Alpha Card 40 as the simplification of strategies and magic, right? Direct damage, creatures, decking. Um, I actually think that the answer to your question, which is, should players be playing it as a, a fun, casual format, you know, just a novelty format, or should they take it seriously? I think the answer is the same. That in Magic, there are different people people who play for different reasons. And I think that when it comes to playing a deck like this, your broken, the broken deck. The, the blue I mean, Voss. The blue Vice. It's, I think it's a, a novelty deck, and it's fun to do at least once. Yeah. Um, I also think, though, that there's nothing wrong with coming in and playing with alpha cards. They are aesthetically unique. They're aesthetically appealing. Mm. Now, now, Brian, you know, and old school players have a a different perspective on alpha. You know, I, I certainly well, they were banned for years. Yeah, I certainly used <laughs> to feel that way. They around were worth less than betas. Around 2003 and 2004, I started shifting my opinion towards alpha. I used to be completely against alpha for the same reasons as Brian. But I think what's what's so we- weird about Alpha is, I don't know how to put this, but there's a cartoony feel to them. When you look at them, they feel yeah, yeah. and look bubbly. Just that rounded corner gives it a more uh, a more cartoony feel. And so I think there's something incredibly appealing about playing an Alpha deck. And whether you're playing an Alpha an Alpha deck with Samite healers and Benalish heroes, you're playing one with 
seven black uh, seven soul rings i think you're gonna have a good time yeah and i think at the end of the day people have different reasons for having a good time but every as long as everyone has a good time that's what matters yeah that's awesome all right cool all right guys thanks for watching i sure had a good time uh thanks for my good friends here brian and steven uh I have to second that with uh, what Brian and or basically Steven said was that it doesn't, you know, in magic, you know, I, um, when I play, I like to make something that like when I play video games, for example, you guys should know uh, final fantasy, for example, um, I like to try to get a level 99. I like to get all the, 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 the cool stuff, right. The, you know, the different class systems and dragon warrior, um, like street fighter. I would play, you know, like Ken all the time and always, try to be the best Ken player I can, right? Just like Ken. I like, I, I mean, I was pretty good, you know, at, at the SNES controller version, you know, I, 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 not the joystick. Um, but I spot, I, mean, I was a professional level like other people, but I, I, I wanted to win. Other people, they just play to just enjoy themselves and may not ever win, you know, they just want to just play. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, resource wise, all this stuff, it just this whole drama of everything, I, I, I've just had an amazing trip just having a great travels. I mean, I'm actually, I've only had three and a half hours sleep and I'm about to crash here in a second. Um, but I'm so excited just to go to Newcom. So uh, we're doing these videos because we're not going to be able to film any of this stuff at Newcom. Um, maybe that changes. I don't know. But if we, at least we can do it now. So I hope you guys have, uh, enjoy the videos. Guys, thanks again for your time. We're going to sign off. You guys going to play some more? Adios. Yep. Take care, guys.